Hi again everyone. In this simple video we're going to learn about basic calculations, basic operations with complex numbers. Now before we get to our example, let's motivate the subject a little bit. Why are not complex numbers important and how are they useful? Why are they worth learning about? Well complex numbers are extensions of the real numbers that you would have learnt about at school. Now, although they seem rather abstract, complex numbers find useful applications in all sorts of places. So I've listed a couple here like signal analysis, fluid mechanics, relativity, quantum mechanics, engineering and so on. Now a solid understanding of the basic operations involving complex numbers, they give us the power to do more interesting things with them, solve better, bigger problems and um, um, do more significant things with them. So basically complex numbers are worth learning about. They may seem abstract but they have lots of good applications. Okay so let's get down to our example. Let's build, build our intuition a little bit. Here we've defined two complex numbers Z and W in the following way and we want to calculate these three expressions or simplify them I guess you could say. In the first case we have the division of one complex number and by another complex number. So we recognize that. What we would like to do is get this denominator to become a real number. That way the whole expression is simplified and we can, for example, plot it very easily on an argon diagram. So how do we do that? Well, the idea is to multiply the top and bottom of this expression by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Okay, so This is our particular expression and what we would like to do is get that denominator to a real number or turn it into a real number. Now I can do that by multiplying the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So note the complex conjugate is almost the same as this but the sign has been changed for the coefficient of i. So instead of positive 2i, it's negative 2i. Okay, so now all I really need to do is expand these brackets in the normal way and we'll see that on the bottom we'll get a real number. So let's just verify that. something like this. Now I can cancel these terms off down here. I can add the like terms up here and remember that i squared equals negative 1. So for example minus 14 i squared is going to turn into positive 14. Now on the bottom I have 1 minus 4 i squared. i squared is negative 1 so I'm going to have 1 plus 4. So indeed we can see that yes that is a real number now and in fact I can go one step further and divide into each term here. Okay so this is our answer for part A. Now notice this is much simpler than this expression here. It's much easier to plot this for example in the complex plane than this. Okay. Let's move on to the next part of our question. Here we've got a product and we want to calculate 4 times z bar times w. Now the, the bar here means conjugate. So 4 times the conjugate of z times w. How do we do that? Well it's basic multiplication, nothing fancy here. 
the only thing you really have to be aware of is the basic identity i squared equals negative 1. So z was 2 minus 5i, z bar will be 2 plus 5i. So let's expand our brackets and then we can simplify. Okay, so we can add our like terms. 10i squared equals negative 10. And if I really want to, I can then just expand these brackets to form our final answer. Okay, lastly, we want to calculate the principal argument of the complex number w minus 3i. So how do we do that? So let's simplify w minus 3i first. And I can see that I'm going to get 1 minus i in here. So I'm after the principal argument of 1 minus i. So how can we do that? Now, the principal argument is just an angle. And it has, it's a special angle. It has to be between greater, uh, strictly greater than minus pi and less than or equal to positive pi. So let's actually, you can do this a number of ways. I'm actually just going to draw this complex number, 1 minus i, in the complex plane. It's going to look something like this. So the length here is 1. The length here is 1. Okay, it's not very accurate. Okay, and what I'm after is this angle here. Now notice that to go to the positive real axis, okay, or from the real axis to the complex number, the angle turns in a, in a clockwise fashion. So that means my answer is going to be negative here. All right, well I can use simple trig, basically, I can just draw the triangle in question. Okay, so if I use tan inverse alpha, I know that's going to be 1. So in this, alpha is just pi on 4, just using trig. Okay, but remember we're turning here in a clockwise fashion. So my answer is actually going to be negative. So the principal argument of this complex number here is negative pi on 4. Okay, that's the simple example. Let's uh, talk about the more general case though. What are some ideas that you can use for general um, calculations and operations? Okay, well if you're dividing by a complex number, then in general, a good idea is to apply the rationalization approach by using the complex conjugate, as we did in part A. Multiplication of complex numbers can be carried out by simply expanding the brackets in the normal way and remembering that i squared equals negative 1. Okay? It's, it's quite easy. And the most easiest op operations of all are addition and subtraction of complex numbers, and you just add or subtract the corresponding real and imaginary parts. Now, it's important to understand that you get good at maths by doing maths. Okay, don't just sit here, watch this video passively and expect to learn everything. Here's some examples that are very similar to the one that I've just done. I invite you to simplify these expressions. And I'm going to leave you, leave you with um, a slightly um, deeper question. When we multiply two complex numbers, what does it actually mean? Is there a physical interpretation of the product of two complex numbers? If we, for example, multiply the numbers 2 and 3, just real numbers, we know that the answer will give us the area enclosed by a rectangle with sides of length 
2 and 3. But what about complex numbers? What happens if I multiply two complex numbers? What is the geometric interpretation? Well, there is one, and that's the subject of another video.